that Italians came from. One of the earliest clubs formed during this period was the Società Italiana di Mutuo Soccorso Guglielmo Marconi. World War I had special importance for Italians in Canada. They had the possibility to render service to Italy and loyalty to Canada at the same time. At the start of the war, there had been hostility towards Italians by the host society because the Italian government was in alliance with the Central Powers. However, when the Italian government became the ally of Great Britain, sentiment in Canada abruptly shifted in favor of the Italian immigrants. Therefore, between 1922 and 1935, respectable Italian Canadians, full of patriotism of World War I, could support fascism with the full approval of their fellow Canadians. Mussolini was seen as the champion of the middle classes. He seemed to be winning respect and approval for Italy in Canada, as well as internationally. His solution to the problem of communism and later to economic depression found support from the Western world. By 1927, the fascist government had replaced the Commissioner of Immigration with a Director General of Italians Abroad. Italian immigrants were to be considered overseas Italian subjects and not immigrants lost to the mother country. In Toronto, the Italian Consular Service raised money for Casa d'Italia, a cultural center that would serve the community and the fascist party as well. Fascism was an acceptable political belief in Canada before the Italo-Ethiopian War and Mussolini's eclipse by Hitler. The Italian-Canadian press became a battlefield between fascists and anti-fascists. There were often violent encounters between the two sides. As fascist foreign policy became aggressive, Canadian public opinion following that of Great Britain grew hostile to Italy and to the overt political activity in the country. Between 1938 and 1940, Italian-Canadians began to sense the approaching conflict between their loyalty to Canada and their sympathy for the mother country. When Italy declared war against Great Britain and her allies on June 10, 1940, Italian-Canadians were confused and apprehensive. The Canadian government responded immediately. Justice Minister Lapointe made the following statement in Parliament. The very minute the news was received that Italy had declared war on Great Britain and France, I signed an order for the internment of many hundreds of men whose names were on the list of the RCMP as suspects. The denial of civil liberties extended to all individuals of Italian origin who became naturalized British subjects after September 1st, 1929. These individuals were categorized as enemy aliens and men from this group were rounded up and sent to concentration camps such as Camp Perawawa. The list of those arrested included prominent men from every walk of life. Although some were active fascist members, others were arrested only because their names were Italian. Discrimination against Italians prevailed in small and large towns across the province and Canada. Popular reaction against Italian Canadians was violent. Windows of Italian-owned businesses were smashed and walls defaced. Italians were denied work and families whose menfolk were in turn were denied welfare. Italian Canadians reacted to this mistreatment in a variety of ways, one of which was to anglicize their names. Many demonstrated their commitment to Canada by volunteering for the Canadian Armed Forces where they made a special effort to prove themselves during the Second World War. Following the war, there was a mass Italian immigration. One of the precipitating factors was the removal of Italians from the enemy alien category in 1947. In addition, Canada was under international political pressure to increase its population due to the Atlantic Alliance Agreement. As a result, Ottawa entered into a bilateral agreement with Italy. This agreement embodied two primary measures. To one, improve the quality and increase the quantity of Italian immigrants to Canada, and two, to facilitate the flow of desirable immigrants through matching available numbers in Italy and placement opportunities in Canada. In essence, this meant the recruitment of contract labor. Both Canadian and Italian labor departments were involved in coordinating the movement of particular occupational categories, foremost among them farm laborers, track workers, woodworkers, miners, and construction workers, to meet specific labor shortages in Canada. One firm that recruited track workers from the region of Cosenza in southern Italy was the Welch Construction Company. 
founded at the turn of the century by Giuseppe Veltri, with offices in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and Port Arthur, Ontario. In the 1950s, the Welch Company obtained contracts from the Canadian government to hire work gangs for the CNR. Italians immigrating to Canada in response to placement opportunities were soon followed by wives, children, and other relatives. This kin-linked chain migration occurred throughout Canada in the 1950s and resulted in Italian immigration surpassing that of the British. Indeed, to break this scheme, the government introduced the point system in 1967, whereby immigrants were to enter Canada on the basis of the skills and education they possessed, rather than on the basis of relatives in Canada. Through the point system, immigrants received points based on educational level, work skills, and language ability. If they received a minimum of 50 or 60 points out of 100, they were admitted to Canada. In 1957, the government had already embarked on a review of the immigration policy. Some people believe that Canada's racial composition was changing and threatening Canada's infrastructure, and as a result, there was growing racial hostility towards Italian immigrants. In addition to the growing racial hostility towards Italian immigrants, 1958 brought a severe recession which drove the unemployment rate to the highest since the beginning of World War II. Canada's exports slumped